auftauchen. Welcome to the Asinago channel. I am the Asinago. It's time to go on an adventure. In a recent conversation, we mused about the founding of nations. And it was asked, how do you start a new nation now? I believe a serious response was not intended. Perhaps inspired by Independence Day, I've decided to present a response here. So in this adventure, we will found our own new nation. Well, maybe not me. Perhaps a bold viewer will give it a shot, but I will explain how to do it, or at least how I think it could be done. And I'll say we, but know that I really mean you. There's a whole thing called the sovereign citizen movement. This is where people mostly those who hate taxes, uh, just declare themselves as sovereign in the hopes of avoiding having to pay taxes. This doesn't really work, of course. I should note the sovereign citizen movement is distinct from the stateless person. While some crossover may exist, the stateless person tends to be a refugee. Though, yes, some folks deliberately seek and achieve the status of stateless person, and typically, those are folks who are independently employed in some way, such as having remote tech jobs that happen to pay well. Stateless persons have no nation for which they belong. They have no citizenship anywhere. It can be hard for these people to find a nation that will allow them to live there. But if you have plenty of money, there are nations out there that might consider allowing a stateless person to stay there as a resident alien. Unlike the stateless person, most people in the sovereign citizen movement want to continue residing in their home country, such as the United States, and enjoy the perks and privileges that a modern society provides, such as good hospitals and police services, all while paying no taxes. For the most part, these are folks I might otherwise refer to as morons. No modern state is going to stand for it, and they don't. Most folks trying to pull this stunt off usually get into some serious trouble with the tax man, if not other authorities. Hollywood actor Wesley Snipes gave this a shot and soon found himself in prison for, surprise, surprise, failing to pay taxes. Needless to say, I do not advise it. There are others out there who simply plant a flag on their apartment balcony or a plot of land and then declare the birth of a new nation. This is mostly just a novelty, though there are some who are sincere in their conviction. Ultimately, it means nothing. While I suppose we could talk for hours about this, this video is not about any of that. Rather, I mean to articulate how to create a new nation recognized by the international community and international law. It's a long shot, to be sure. No guarantees, but if someone earnestly set off to do this, I imagine it would have more success than simply planting a flag on your porch. So, what do we need to create a nation? Obviously, a nation needs people and land. But it clearly takes more than people and land, as any member of an independence movement can surely attest. You need international recognition. This is the hard part. Plenty of wealthy folks buy islands. But those islands don't become new nations. Even if the owner wanted that, having another nation recognize your nation still isn't enough. Russia, for example, recognizes a whole bunch of claimed nations for their own ends. Russia likes to meddle in the affairs of their neighbors, as we've seen in Ukraine and other places. One of their go-to tricks is to found, fund, and even arm artificial independence movements in their neighboring countries. This creates divisions in that country, which makes it harder for them to govern themselves. 
which is the point. And it gives Russia the pretense to invade. You know, to protect that oppressed movement that declared independence from those meanies who think they're just a bunch of Russian stooges. It's all a sham and is widely known for what it is. But it gives a sheen of legitimacy to whatever meddling the Russians happen to be up to. At the very least, it gives a lie that can more easily be sold to the Russian public. In the nation of Georgia, not my home state of Georgia, but the country, Russia officially recognizes two nations within Georgia as being independent, Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Russia has deployed troops there to protect them. Russia also recognizes Transnistria, a claimed country within the borders of Moldova. Russia has deployed troops there, too. Russia recognizes numerous independence movements. Recently, they formally recognized new states within Ukraine and used that recognition as a pretext to justify their invasion. No other nations recognize these artificial Russian-backed states, and so their independence, in any legal sense, only really exists on paperwork in Moscow. The point here is, to be recognized as a sovereign state, you need buy-in from most, if not all, the major players. Not just one or several. Taiwan is seen as an independent sovereign nation by much of the world. But China does not see it that way. China is one of the big fish, so the rest of the world just kind of goes on pretending that Taiwan isn't independent. This is why, at the Olympics and other international competitions, they play as Chinese Taipei, under a different flag rather than as Taiwan. So our goal, therefore, must be to get the big fish to recognize our new nation. In short, that means we need the United States of America to recognize that we exist. We need the Americans to use their influence and leverage to help get the European Union to come on board, too. If the United States and the European Union recognize us, the Russians and Chinese probably won't, out of spite. So we need to figure out how to get them, too. Regardless, we need what the Russians play with so cynically. We need a legal claim. This is not planting a flag in your backyard. We need to be able to point to something, preferably documents, that assert our sovereignty. The older it is, the better. But what we cannot do is assert a claim over land that is currently occupied. Frankly, if it is occupied, well... There's going to be more of them than there are of, well, you. We need unoccupied land that has some documentation, somewhere, showing that it is sovereign. But it's just not acting that way, because no one is there to assert the claim. So, technically, we're not founding a new nation, per se. Rather, we are restarting a defunct one. All land in this world right now is governed by some body. So, we start out knowing we have to pick land that we intend to break away from its existing richer, larger, organized, and, dare I say, legitimate claimant. That means we need to find a nation that has a lot of enemies. A nation that other nations, preferably big fish, don't mind being screwed with. A nation unpopular enough that some of the big fish might even help us in screwing them. And this nation needs to be comparatively weak and lack much global influence. But we need more than just the right spot on a map, because even a weak nation is a great power when compared to a lone viewer of a YouTube video. Land, a claim to it, wealth, and a deterrent. That's what we're going to do. The land. We must pick our spot. Cuba is a fascinating place, and I'd love to visit. The politics of Cuba and all that, I'm making no judgment on any of it. I mean no ill will. Cuba is just a target of convenience. Rather, I know that Cuba and the United States have long had an antagonistic relationship. This can be advantageous for our purposes. Remember, we're being cynical, like the Russians. Since the passing of the Castro brothers, that relationship has improved although the United States still maintains its stupid embargo and travel ban. 
Cuba has also had frosty relations with other major players, including regional ones. So it could prove an even more fruitful hunting ground for our purposes. Were we to poke Cuba in the eye, the United States may not object. Perhaps they might help. Probably not, what with Joe Biden in the White House. But this game of ours will take some years to complete. If the United States is on board, it wouldn't take much to get others to come on board too. So what then is our legal claim? Well, some background is in order. At the end of World War II, Germany was divided between East and West. There were a lot of territorial changes to the map at the end of the war. Before the war, Germany looked like this. At the end, it looked like this. But both East and West Germany did claim to be the successor state. Because there was not a unified Germany, none agreed on who the legitimate successor was. And so there was no agreed upon political entity to sign off on those territorial changes. Finally, beginning in 1990, East and West Germany reunified. And the now reunified Germany could finally act as a legitimate successor and sign the final settlement of World War II. This happened in 1990. The new reunified Germany formally recognized all the territorial changes that had happened at the end of the war. But they forgot about the territorial changes that happened after the war and before reunification. Specifically, one change. You see, in 1972, Fidel Castro, then the leader of Cuba, gave an island to East Germany. This island, once Cayo Blanco del Sur, was renamed Ernst Talman Island after a German communist leader. The East German government built a resort on their new tropical island and a statue to this communist leader. Today, it remains Ernst Talman Island, and all that remains on the island is an old abandoned resort hotel and that statue. In other words, all that can be found on this island are assets erected by the East German state. This island was not included in the final settlement signed in 1990. Seems they forgot about it. Of course, Fidel Castro and the Cuban government reasserted their claim. And today, they just say that it was never official to begin with. Bollocks, I say. Bollocks. The name change is certainly legal. It's still on the map. That's what the island is called. Now. The property assets also belong to East Germany. So East Germany still exists. Granted, this is all a rather tenuous claim, but that's what lawyers are for. Speaking of, Legal Eagle is now offering real world legal services via the Eagle team. Perhaps you may want to reach out to them should you endeavor to reestablish the East German state. Of course, claiming that East Germany still exists and trying to reassert the East German claim over Ernst Talman Island and related assets is likely not going to go very far, at least by itself. Few will take it any more seriously than the guy with the flag on his porch. We must up the stakes. We need some wealth. And a deterrent wouldn't hurt. And with wealth and a deterrent, we'll be able to keep the Cuban police off our back as we once again raise that tricolor above our island. The wealth. First, if you're already wealthy, you can skip this part. Or if you already have a benefactor or, or a great fundraiser, you too can skip this part. But if you're a working class hero, stay tuned. There are 11 billion get-rich-quick schemes out there. But mine is not a scheme. Scheme implies a fraud or scam. No. Using my method, you will be a multimillionaire in however long it takes you to get where I'm going to tell you to go. I could play the game where I keep talking about how great my not a scheme is without ever actually saying what it is. You know, like most others. But not me. No. I'm going to tell you. Right after this message from the Eagle team. Just kidding. Just kidding. Right here, folks. This is where you can go grab 
149 bars of pure gold bullion. That's 2.2 tons of pure gold, also known as over $110 million. Right there. Now you know. You're welcome. If you're wondering why it's in the ocean, it's because the gold rests in the hull of a sunken ship. Specifically, the I-52, an Imperial Japanese submarine, sunk during World War II. It was en route to occupied France to buy materials from the German government. Therefore, this spot is, tragically, a protected war grave. That means it's a crime to go and collect that gold, assuming you can just go get it. But as East Germany, this gold was intended for Germany. So perhaps an enterprising young lawyer can make a good case for why you taking it is not illegal. It was always intended for you. Regardless, there are no walls, no guards, no nothing. There it is. As they say, every great fortune begins with a great crime. Specific to our case, every great nation begins with a great crime. Just ask Native Americans. Even better for our purposes, this ain't banknotes like U.S. dollars, euros, or British pounds. This is gold. No embargoes or sanctions on that. This is the perfect foundation to establish a new national treasury for East Germany. Gold bullion intended for Germany, used by East Germany. And because our island is so small, $100 million should go a pretty long way. Should you decide to go for that booty, I wish you good luck. I suggest a pirate hat. And speaking of pirate hats, now on to the deterrent. We do not need a deterrent, so this part isn't required. But a deterrent would certainly help. At the very least, folks would be more inclined to take us seriously if we had one. And what deterrent is better than nukes? Well, have I got some good news for you. Right off Tybee Island near Savannah, in that great and infallible state of Georgia, lies a hydrogen bomb. That's right. This guy. Like the gold, it's just sitting there, totally unguarded. Unlike the gold, I can't tell you exactly where it is. I can only give you an approximate location. You see, the United States Air Force accidentally dropped this bomb back in 1958. Oops. Fortunately, they had not armed it first. The exact whereabouts are unknown. They know where they dropped it, but because it was an unplanned drop, and because of forward motion, speed, altitude, and such, where it actually ended up is a guess. The area there is very muddy, so it likely plunged itself well into the mud. But it is also quite shallow around there. In most places, your feet can touch bottom. So get yourself a dinghy and go looking. Why not? Hell, make it a weekend thing. Take some friends and beers with you. Don't forget a fishing pole as a cover story. Because it's been in the water so long, if you do find it, it probably won't detonate. But the core is, and shall remain, highly radioactive. This means it'll make an excellent dirty bomb. So when you get it, take it down to our new nation, and then use it to help to keep the Cuban police off our island. Keep that threat alive. Should Cuban authorities try to kick you off the island, you're prepared to unleash your dirty bomb. That should keep them away while you press your case for recognition. If you can't find the bomb, you're just going to have to rely on bribes to keep the Cuban officials out, and so kind of literally buy time. Having completed all these steps, we should have a national treasury, insecurely housed in a dilapidated old hotel, and an old dirty bomb sitting outside, probably next to the statue of that communist. And most importantly, our lawyers are pressing our legal claim at the International Court of Justice in The Hague while lobbying influential public officials. Never forget we can always hire or bribe important figures to endorse our claim. Meanwhile, we'll drink pina coladas and stare down angry Cuban police on the other side of the water. While we need not be communist, unfortunately we will have to officially remain East Germany, at least until our claims are validated, we're internationally recognized as legitimate, and we reclaim our seat at the United Nations General Assembly. After that, should we wish to change our name and flag, we could do so. But why? East Germany is our roots, and it would be good to retain that sense of national pride. Regardless, once our independence is secured, 
We should try to enter into some kind of defense agreement with the United States, though probably having to give up our hydrogen bomb in the process. From there, we set out to be another successful micronation like Singapore, Monte Carlo. And there you have it, forging a nation state today as proposed by the Asinago. Good luck to you on your adventure. Live the dream. In this video, I have told you how to create a new nation, or re-establish an old one. And I've told you how to amass the fortune needed to do it. And if you enjoyed this little journey, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. I thank you. So with nothing left to say, I reckon I'm gonna get. Cheers.